and welcome to today's Just Chops In podcast and radio show. And today we are with Steve Diggle. And Steve Diggle is one of the founding members of the Buzzcocks. How are you doing, Steve? Nice to be here, yes. Are you very, yeah. uh, very in the pub? Yeah. So you've just been telling us you've been doing interviews, uh, quite a lot of interviews today. Who have been doing interviews for? Um. I think one was from Court, one was for some other magazines. I've lost track of it, really. All right, okay. Yeah. You got a new album out called Sonics in the Soul. Yes, that's right. And how's that being received, mate? Oh, very good. It's just on an indie chart to number fifteen, mm. but um, that's good. You know, it's first first time out here. But yeah, it's been received well, actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of the people and the fans that bought it. The regular fans and new people really like it. So, you know, they're getting it, really. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. Um, I tried to make it different than, you know, last Buzzcocks albums and stuff. Yeah, you I know, was going to say, it's very different. It is very different, yeah. to be honest. It's a bit more yeah. Oasis than uh, Buzzcocks, if you like. Uh, don't know about that, but yeah, I've drink for <laughs> Liam. He only lives down the road. But um, the thing is... Um, um, I try to take. I wrote in COVID time, and I try to take all the um, the elements of Buzzcocks yeah. uh, with it, but try and move it on to somewhere else as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I suppose it's pretty it difficult would, without Pete. Well, not really. I mean, but it is difficult. You know, it's, it's painful to lose my brother, and it's you know, it's painful not to have him there. Yeah, but. Um, but also, I could have easily rewrote singles going steady or something, because I know it's done, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm the guy that wrote Promises, I'm in my head, and not the real ones like that. Uh, it is fun. I thought I've got to move on to somewhere else with it as well. Yeah. You know, make a clean break, because we've got all them things in the castle. I've got all the other great songs, the other Fallen's and Down Me in My Head and Lord Solomon, things like that. And, um, <coughs> but, you know, um, I thought, Got to take you somewhere else as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so that's what I try to do with it. And you know, I think it's kind of works. Uh, most people have gone to place with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. That's good. Are you are you looking to gig the album as well now? Because I've been on your your socials and I've not been able yeah. to see any any tour dates or anything that's come up yet. Yeah, we're we're doing some. Um, we're doing some, We're playing the. Uh, Tunbridge Wells this weekend, and we're joining, well enough, no way Bruce Fox and from the jam for a few gigs. We're joining okay. them over the year as well. Okay. Which is a, which is a weird one, but um, it's kind of good. I've known Bruce for years. But also, we're doing our own gigs as well, but we're joining them because it's some 40th anniversary they're doing, you know. Oh, right. So, okay, yeah. So we've jumped on a bit of their gigs for stuff uh, as well. Oh, but cool. yeah, we will be on tour to about April. Oh, cool. the next year with it all. Do so you still do like all the festivals like Rebellion and that sort of stuff, mate? Yeah, we just did K Fest. We had a thing called K Fest this year. Okay. And it was on the Blackpool seafront and we played to 8,000 people there. You know? All right, that's pretty good. And it's pretty good considering that, um, you know, I do, we did uh, at least three songs off this new album. Um, some of the classic stuff and some um, some of the regular people that follows around, uh, you know, we did some uh, album tracks as well that we don't normally play. So it's kind of like a three-tier set. So lot, lots of kind of cram in to, you know, uh, get the three categories together, really. Yeah. But, um, but they all loved it, yeah. yeah. And oh, especially when we was playing like Manchester in Bad Dreams and... Um, um, You've just got to let it go. And another song off the new album, you know. Mm. They've never heard them before. Yeah, and yeah. And we've, we've been doing a lot of gigs this year. And, um, you know, they're loving those as well. Some, you know, they wouldn't have heard them before. Yeah. You know, before the album. So that's been a good test, you know. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good, yeah. I've, I've had a good listen to it today and... Um... I was saying to Terry before before you came on, my favourite track is Bad Dreams. Yeah, I love that one too, yeah. 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 And as somebody said, the great line is, uh, 
I want to answer it. I had a bad dream, but now it's gone, which is the kind of release, you know, it's not getting too down there. Yeah. And also the key lines at the end, was it just a dream or just real life, you know? Yeah. So it's that kind of, I can't like that because plus Cox always had a chug like on autonomy and maybe fiction romance. But those are, you always had a chug. So I thought, as I was writing the album, I kind of wrote so normally you write a bunch of songs and then you kind of sequence them at the end. Mm. But as I was writing the album, I wrote them kind of to sequence, which I've never done before. Okay. In terms of like, We've got kind of three fast ones at the beginning, and now here's the bad news. Yeah, we've got to tell you now bad dreams and some heavier stuff, you know, like experiment yeah. and all that. But I, I tried to make that a 70s album pre punk, really, mm. in terms of like a whole experience. Mm. It's like because when you read a book, you, you know, you start at the beginning and you have to get to the end of the book to know what the book's about. And the same with an album, remember the old days, certain albums, not just a collection of songs. It was all kind of somehow interlinked, mm. or it was a whole experience. And I want you to get that. You know, these fucking downloaders and all these people cherry picking tracks. Yeah. You know, this album was not just to tap your feet to. It's like, let's get into this kind of, you know, a bit more density and experience of an album. Like yeah. we used to have when we was young, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And that's yeah, what I try to do with it. When yeah, you listen we... to the whole album, you realise it paints a bigger picture than just, you know. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's yeah. cool. We, we talk about that quite often, don't we, with, you know, kind of like modern society. People will listen to something for 15 seconds or, like you said, cherry-pick specific songs. And a lot of people don't just, you know, chuck an album on and listen from start to finish anymore. It's a shame. No. It? Well, that's it. It's like, as you remember growing up yourself, the experience of an album, and considering the album, the, the final the, the final 12-inch album is a lot more popular now. Mm. It's like, let's treat that with respect and let's try and pass on to younger kids. Not young kids come to our gigs. Try and mm. pass that on to them. Like, you know, it can be life-changing in the full form of it, you know. Yeah. And, and give you that whole thing. It's not just about tapping your feet, it's like a whole deal. So, I yeah, kind of it's wrote, like, it's... Wrote what, I realized halfway through that's what I need to be doing right to order that, mate. Give me that mm. density, a bit of a philosophical thing, and a bit of reflection. The artist holding the mirror like in bad dreams because it's like a bit trans. When you go into that trans mode and that chug, then you can go into yourself and you know, internalise things, what the music's doing to you, but also find things about yourself. I mean, it sounds a bit highfalutin that, but that's what I'm trying to do on that song. Mm. It's like, you know, let's find out Kierkegaard moments of realisation. Really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we can get, if we can get something from it rather than just tapping your fucking foot to it, then it's more important I had um, right, you're back. Sorry, are we back? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got I've got a music room, but it was the summer of COVID and it was really hot. So I wrote a lot in my shed. And I found like Bowie's um found an old cassette of Bowie um Diamond Dogs in there. Oh right. And yeah. I thought and I thought that's a dark album and that's Bowie's not singing fucking Starman on that, you know? Yeah. Um and I'm thinking need some of that enrichment in there subconsciously that might have soaked in a little bit you know yeah and yeah. albums like that you know yeah when it's like you know um bringing some of that into it like don't mess with my brain everyone's on it but also there's a song called experimental fun now it was covid covid kind of started and then um it was let up for a bit so i went to greece um, and I was in Greece at the Electra Palace Hotel. I went to a bookshop I go there. My missus is Greek, I know, and I'm out there. But I was at the Electra Palace Hotel. Went to this uh, bookshop I go to, and it's three floors of Greek books, and they've got about 10 books in, written in English, you know. Right. Yeah. So I thought, I ain't got much choice here, but I thought, when then H.G. Wells, Two short stories, The Invisible Man and Food of the Gods. I thought, this is weird. 
I, you know, I'll buy that because at least I can read it because I can't read Greek. But um, it, um, I felt sweet. I read The Invisible Man, which is amazing because we kind of seen the film but never actually read the book. Mm. And um, I thought we're all we're all wearing masks around that time. <laughs> and I thought this is ironic. I'm reading The Invisible Man, you know. Yeah. But then the next story is Food of the Gods, and and um, with that, it was kind of like um, some professor, uh, some scientist uh, from London goes down to Kent, gives a couple of you know former bumpkins this substance. He's so saying, if you if you take this, or if you feed this to the chickens, the chickens will grow big. Well, when that was the chickens grew big. But also, um, rats grew big and butterflies grew big. Everything got big. And I thought, that's kind of like the substance they send on the bus or the tube, you know, the doctor. Yeah. Take. So I thought, this is weird. We didn't just wear with the mask and now this. Stuff. But, it, but also, I thought, where's it going with this? Everything's going big. The village is in disarray, you know, it's all getting out of hand. And then um, the kids that ate this food, they grew massive. It was like going to travels. And I thought, wait, what's the key to this story? And the, the kids that grew giant said, we're really tall. We're growing tall. We're too tall to go in the village anymore. It's all them small people making the rules, oh, making yeah. the rules and regulations and keeping us out. And I thought, that's this little political thing there. Yeah. So having read that, that's how I came up with that track at Experimental Farm, you know? All right, okay. Yeah. But also at the same time, you know, apart from I drink and I smoke, I'm very concerned what we eat and what they put in the food, uh, which has saved my life, really. It enables me to drink and smoke a bit more. Um, <laughs> and do, do other things sometimes. <laughs> and uh, so there's all that. And I thought, I've never written a song about food. So essentially about that as well, and also about the political thing of what they do with this food, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think causes heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes, and all that as well. Yeah, well, I mean, you can read into a lot more. But basically, the song's called Experimental Farm. So, yeah. As we go on the album, you know, you've got a track like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've spoken about this recently, actually, because there's a lot more cases of NS in popping up. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I mean, I know people that are getting it, and it's just like, what are they putting in the food or what are they putting in the water? I'm sure they're trying to kill us before we get yeah. the pension age because there's not going to be any pension left, you know? No, no, so, exactly, yeah. There's an agenda you somewhere. If you get 75, you don't have to pay your television license. Fucking whoopee, you know, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> is that what you're living for? But, um, yeah, I mean, there's all them things. And if you don't get the things in your body, you can tell them people with them white, pale faces... Yes. It's like they're, they're eating shit food. They, if you get no nourishment in your body, then you're gonna fucking you're gonna die early, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. a big concern. Yeah. And um, when I changed my diet at least 15 years ago or more, just eating simple and basic healthy food, um, it helped me to drink a smoke. <laughs> and yeah, 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 yeah. But also, I sniff a bowl of steam every day. We did a gig with Sting in France, a big festival. I said to him, I'm snorting steam these days. <laughs> <laughs> he said, in the cleanse, you know. But it's true, because even if they talk about, you know, the um, the climate change and exhaust things are causing it, you know, even if you don't smoke like me, if you do a bowl of steam every day, like you do as a kid, yeah. you put bacon in or something, you snort a bowl of steam every day, you're cleaning your lungs of all the outside pollution, you know. Yeah. It's just... I'd like to pass it on to people. It's a simple way of cleaning yourself without worrying about, you know, what the drowning in yourself. The rivers and stuff. Well, it's a simple, instant thing. It costs you too quick for a bowl and a couple of steam, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's get back to, you know, I'm back to the steam age now. Trains went diesel, but I'm back on the steam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the price of electric nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I might get a water wheel in my house soon. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's an important point about that song for me. Is, uh, and you think you can say the government's wrong, 
we all know that. I mean, you know, I ain't going to put that in a song, but I'll put it in other ways, you know. But it, it's like I'm not going to insult people. That's say, like, you know, he's telling me that. What really? I want more from a song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the food thing, and even that steam thing, I'm telling you, I think that's kind of, you know, something you can do for yourself quick and easy, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And people say, oh, you go in them old shops, it's expensive, but buy less, don't buy 500 bottles of Coca-Cola and all the other shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't eat for enjoyment, I eat for health now. You know? Yeah, yeah. Which uh, is I a mean, different learning process with it, you know. To be honest, I mean, I, my view of food, I mean, I, I used to do, like, weight training and stuff. I only oh. used to eat for fuel. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. You know? I, I mean, because my girlfriend doesn't understand how I can eat the same fucking meal like 10 times a day, every day. You know what I mean? Because all I used to eat at one point was chicken, broccoli, and fucking rice. And I, I'd eat that like four or five times a day, seven days yeah. a week, and it, it wouldn't bother me. You know? I never no, ate sweets. I never, ate, I never drank squash or pop. No. Yeah. You know? So that's not really a, an unhealthy meal. It's just it's just the no, same thing. Well, it- You've adapted it. Your body tells you what you're eating and what you're doing. You know when you put something bad in there and it's like, oh, you know. And you, so you've adapted it. You know, it's yeah. uh, it, it, it's important for all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But now but they've got uh, this thing called the obesogens. Have you heard of them? Sorry? They've got this thing now. They call, they call them obesogens. Right. And they are fucking... They, what, they've, what they've decided is obesogens, things yeah. that are found in plastic, so when they wrap your food in plastic, these are obesogens are making you fat, right? All right, yeah. But that doesn't really make sense, does it? Because, I mean, as a bodybuilder myself, I'm an ex-bodybuilder mm. even, Yeah. I was eating out of Tupperware fucking five, six times a day, do you know what I mean? And I never, I mean, got, yeah. I never got fat. It's just those fat fuckers eating fucking crisps and everything. Yeah, That's what's making them plastic. fucking fat, you know? If Yeah, well, exactly. But if you eat the right foods... Foods you build up um, immunity to any other crap that comes in. So yeah, he's, them yeah. Practices. It's like now they cut they cut on a fish and it's full of fucking you know, their water bottles, you know, bits of plastic. You think you're having a nice sea bass and it's like, it's like them fat plastic fish you used to win at the fair, you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> make you worry about that stuff, you know, with that. But yeah. Um, just to point that out to people, or just to put in a song, you know, and all the expense you do. You know, it's one of my little undertone political things with that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, if you're going to say anything about, you know, that's part of the new rock and roll re- revolution, really, I think, in some ways, you know. Yeah, yeah, Careful it should be, what yeah. You eat. yeah. Then you can go out and do your drink and your drugs and your smoke. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you go out for a jog in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. We've all, we've all been there, and I think everybody <laughs> knows what we're talking about. <laughs> but somebody told me the other day, I met this girl, and she said, I see, she has a shot of, shot of gin before she goes to the gym. I mean, that's what. <laughs> gin <laughs> before gym? gym. <laughs> before, before she goes to the gym. That's a new one, isn't it? Gin before yeah, gym. Yes, I don't know about that. You know, you're going to infuse it fast. You're supposed to reward yourself after with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. That's like gin will fix it. <laughs> you should be on the telly. <laughs> gin and, I love that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been around the scene for you know, 40 years. Yeah. I don't know how many years it is now, to be honest. But, I mean, what would you say your favourite ever punk gig was? All of them. I mean, what I realised early on was um, thing is, in 10, back in 1976, we brought Sex Pistols to Manchester. We all got yeah. them. All the journalists came down to review the Sex Pistols. Surprise, there was a band from Manchester there. And according to Pete, we started two days before the class. They're all our mates, you know. Yeah. The nucleus was the class, the pistols, the jam, and the dam in 1976. Yeah. We wrote the script. All the other ones are acting out of the play, you know. Yeah. But, but, um, so there was an intensity then of, of you know, your surroundings, a million people coming up on a dole and all that. 
Yeah. Well, we kind of had a bit of existential lyrics, and we realised the world was a bit complex. So we had a lot of that in our thing. Like I say, we went down to all the government. So I was like, what, you're telling me? Oh, fucking, you know, that's, that was too simple for us, really. Yeah. Um, but we never consciously sort of decided on anything. It's who we were, kind of mix, fit, misfits, we look, whatever you want. We, we kind of looked at the world in a different way. But um, it brought everybody alive and it brought Manchester alive. Alive because, like, oh, we've got a local band, you know, and all the journalists roll about and put us on the map, you know, and we had mm. Spiral Threat, which kind of blew people's mind, I guess. Now, you know, it was like very different than anything out there. Um, and away we went from there. So, you had all the intensity of 1977. We did the White Rights over the Clash. Mm. We did a, a lot of our, you know, our own gigs all around them. And it, under the umbrella, it was all like called punk, but then bands became the, the bands, you know, the Clash became the Clash. One of the albums, the Buzzcocks became the Buzzcocks, so you could differentiate and see what the difference was. In the beginning, it was all about the attitude and, 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 and um, the statement of intent of that, you know, that yeah. sort of dark Darius thing, rip it up, throw it in the air, and let's see what happens. Yeah. So there was all, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it goes on. So at my age now, it's like, don't worry about what I'm playing. I'm worried about what you're doing in the audience, you know? Yeah. So we come to the only show to rock and roll and try and bring people in and um, experience the thing. And in between the band and the audience, that's where you see God, the devil, and everything you gospel and everything in life. That's the lovely exchange I've learned over the years. It's like, I'm concerned what you're doing out there, not what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. You know, it should, let's have some exchange in this furnace kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to end up like Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think about, like, the new wave of rock that came through with bands like Green Day and that sort of stuff? Yeah, no, they... I never had the box, you know, they said they're influenced by us in that, you know? Yeah. But, but like I say, we wrote the script, then that's in out of the place, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Lost, lost in translation in some ways. Mm. Yeah, that's what I found. That, yeah. It's a great compliment. But in Melissa, I mean, saw Sonic's in a soul. These songs come from the heart and soul and who we were, you know. Mm. But sometimes you can detect when people are aping a thing, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. when, where's. You know, philosophically, the Greek thing, where's that fucking stuff they're supposed to be singing about? Like Little Richard used to sing about stuff. Yeah. That's, excuse me, mate. Hello? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going, hello, mate, excuse me. Holly, can I have another one of these? Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, I'm in a pub. I've done a lot of interviews today. I'm celebrating being at number 15 or whatever. Yeah, you're, you're all right, mate. Good. You're all right. Yeah. Good. But um, you can kind of tell the um, the um, uh, what's real and what's not, but really, you know, yeah. Because in one way, in this album, I want to see, see. When I was a kid, I, I had the first Beatles album. I had a Beatles single back uh, when I was seven years old, back in about nine sixty three. Um, Girl across the road had long blonde hair. My mate's sister was. 16, beginning yes. of the swinging 60s, and she had a hairdryer. And now we look, the Russians had put a Sputnik in the space, and I thought, she's trying to hide the Russian Sputnik. <laughs> but watching, watching her dry her long blonde hair and listening to the first Beatles album, I got the Beatles to the tunes and the harmonies, and I thought, this is all bro, Bob Dylan. I don't know what he's saying, and I still don't know what he's saying, it's Dave, but he's saying something, and then um, that really affected me. And I thought, I didn't realize it's seven years old that crystallized my life, you know. Yeah, mm. yeah. I got sick here and I was watching it, listening to music, like, well, I wasn't even going to go into music, I, you know. Yeah. But, um, but that was an amazing moment. But, but those kind of moments, I, I, I think it's important how we listen to music and when it does. And that's what it looks to me. And I suppose it just to a certain extent. So you get people slipping on a banana skin on TikTok, which is 
yeah, different yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that's not that fucking funny, man. You know, who yeah. the fuck are you? you know? mm. So I'm about that, really. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and this album's about that, really. Yeah. I can't say. And that Diamond Dogs in the background and a couple of other things, and um, and a bit of density of the Dylan things, really, and things like that. You know, it kind of reflects my back, to, uh, back to my childhood and stuff, or whatever, or growing up, and how I loved the music. Because we made a lot of personal albums, mm. and I thought I'm on my own now without my brother Pete. Mm. I'll bring, I'll bring some of the ingredients that we have there, and my guitar riffs, you know, mm. stuff like that, and um, and put it into this album. I make it a bit heavy, a bit philosophical, and. Catchy as COVID, dude. Catchy as COVID. Catchy as COVID, naturally. Well, I love COVID for that because it gave me this album. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. If you've been locked up, yeah. 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 And I thought the next album, which I'm already halfway through, rightly, I'm not recording it. Yeah. Um, um, which hopefully will be different from this. I see this as a bridge album. It's like, yeah, you can hear the buzz comps there, but it's moving on a bit. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we should move on somewhere else after this. Okay, still with the first talk flavor, you know, because like I say, I couldn't have wrote a, you know, a bus talk album like the other ones. Yeah, because there's some people who are like, oh, we don't sound like the bus talk team. Yeah. It's like, no, because it's a new album, you know. What I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not real, man. You know, you understand what's going on here. You know? Well, it's so, 2022, mate. Yeah, isn't it? When I wrote Autonomy, I was 20, you know, and Fast Cars and that, 20. Yeah. And it was the punk rock thing. And the world has changed, you know, there's no mobile phones then or computers. Mm. So, and you're affected by your environment, so, you know, it's all that. Yeah. I mean, that song, Just Let It Go, that says about, it's so easy just to leave me alone, it's so easy to get off the phone. That, you know, you've just got to let it go because... You know, people were fucking attacking people and filming them on the phone and putting it on the computer. You know, but, um, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? References, modern stuff that's going on, you know what I mean? Like those kind of things. Yeah. Don't mess with my brain. It's like people disarm with the government and also with the COVID time. So, yeah, yeah. Some, and I think the guy from Cork said this, and I never thought about this really, but he kind of said, um, this is kind of reflect modern Britain now. And I thought, you're right, really. You know? I was just writing about what everybody was thinking and feeling of themselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of moments of like that. Yeah. You know, senses out of control, the single, the first single. Um, it's, um, um, it wasn't my senses out of control. I thought it's a general statement. Everybody's senses out of control. And they still are, you know what I mean? Nobody knows kind of where they are in the world at the moment, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. Politically and every financially, all the things. So I kind of, you know, you can't exclude the listeners, like general things like that. Man. Yeah. And Elton John played that, and he, he loved it. We never sent it, one Elton found it himself and sent a message. I love that scene. Oh, did he? Bizarre. Brilliant. Oh, he looked, yeah. And I thought, you know, normally these people have, like, Produce that you, know, you must play this, you're the DJ. I'm sure you don't know, you play what you like. But yeah. um, um, Elton found that himself and uh, put it on his show. And I thought, that's pretty amazing, really, you know, that he, man of his days. I have met him a couple of times, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't even know he had a show. No, I didn't until he sent a message. <laughs> 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 And I never heard it on there, but he must have. Yeah, <laughs> I don't <cool>. believe it. <laughs> but I've got one on about there about fake news as well. Everything you thought you knew is wrong. I thought well, that's a great title. And then I thought it's fake news, you know, because yeah. Trump would sit around and all that. People stop and stare at small screens everywhere, and everything you thought was wrong. Yeah. This is kind of true under me. So try to adapt to the modern world of these modern things. Isn't it? Mm. And Manchester Rain, the new single. Yeah. I was just pre COVID a couple of years ago. Uh, we did 11 gigs and we had a lovely single called Gotta Get Better. 
but the B-side, Destination Zero, is even better, I think. But, um, so I'm going in, we're playing in Manchester, and I'm going in the stage door, and there's these kids there. Can you sign me an echo, Stephen, or that? We're having a chat, and we're stood in the pouring rain. And um, I thought that was me um, 40 odd years ago, you know. Yeah. So that kind of inspired Manchester Rain, really. But it, it wasn't about hopes and dreams of being successful or famous in the band or something. I thought the main achievement is if, if you can find a way to deal with life, to deal with yourself in life, hmm. and to deal with life, you know what I mean? It's like, I can get through life somehow, you know what I mean? Hmm. And that's the main sentiment of this song. Yeah. It's a, it's a metaphorical rain. It's not about me getting fucking wet in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's always raining in Manchester, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A lot of in the night, it's like you can find yourself in life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Deal with life. Yeah. Which I think everybody, a lot of people in a lot of towns, you know, it's an important thing at the moment, you know. Yeah. How, yeah. I, how, how can I deal with myself? How can you survive? in these things, you know. Mm. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people struggling with mental health uh, you know, issues. You're on the dole line, you've got that double the goop of the middle class bouncing about, and then you've got the upper echelons, you know. Yeah, Lots yeah. to deal with when you're a kid. And, like, one, you can't buy a house because you'll never have enough money, which is criminal, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I blame the BBC for that. Do you remember them programmes in the 80s, you know? But when you put a mirror up in a plant pot, you've just made under grand, you've mugged somebody up. You know I mean? <laughs> a house used to be a home, not an investment, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now it's a, an investment. Investment, yeah. Not in 80s, but still, you know. And now it's stuff, you know. That's all the moral shit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm on my hobby all the time, you <laughs> but when I meet people, when I meet people in the BBC, I have to point out to them. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I think it's very important because you know, young people can't buy houses now. A house used to be a home with love in it. Yeah. On a on a good day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And um, now it's an investment, you know. Yeah. Which is all wrong, you know. I I just think that, you know, it's for. It, Anybody out in the market that wants a roof over the head, and, you know, to get married and have kids, and that is very difficult to do, we say. Yeah, 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 it so is. Expensive. Not yeah. much, there's not much affordable housing uh, anymore, is there? No, no, you're not in the market. You've yeah. either got to be a bank robber or a drug dealer or something to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. you, can't get, you can't get a job at a supermarket and go, I'm going to buy a nice house somewhere. Very difficult. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, most so, kids nowadays live with their mum and dad till they're like 35, don't they? Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, because they just can't afford to get a place of their own. Like. No, exactly. I mean, when we were kids, we were 16, 17, getting out in the world and, you know. Yeah. You never had to think about any things. I mean, no. I own an house on the road. I bought that, but it was a cheap price or relatively cheap, you know. Yeah. I bought it for a home, you know what I mean? The roof on my and the bed and the front, you know, all that. Yeah. And I see so many kids that they can't afford this kind of stuff. You know, that's all wrong with that for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my political thing, you know. Yeah. I I don't, it's, well, I wish my mate Joel Summers here, he'd probably agree with me. Yeah, he probably would, actually. You know. So that's the complications in that. But also, you've got to get, make the art and the music happen yourself. So. Yeah. And I like the song You've Changed Everything Now because that's another thing. You can be with, you can have a mate or a girlfriend or a wife that you thought you knew all your life. Mm. And then suddenly they change, you know what I mean? Suddenly it's like, I thought you knew, I thought it was my mate, or I thought it was my girlfriend or my wife. Yeah. And then you, you can know them. For, 10, 15 years, and then suddenly you don't know them, you don't know the person. So mm. that's kind of a little bit what that's about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A bit like me yeah. and David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's always changing on me, he is. Exactly. Like a chameleon, he's like a chameleon. I don't know, I don't know what I would do with him. <laughs> don't trust him. 
If it's such his best mate, it's like, well, we'll see. He's a <laughs> family mate. His family is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's how they all are at the beginning. <laughs> They're down the line. It's like you might see him in the street and no one's turned out. And it's like, what's happened? <laughs> a great a great thing about that so I'm a big fan of James Joyce that's how I wrote Harmony in my head I thought I won't write a linear song I walk down the street I turn left I make it a bus stop kind of thing Yeah. I write this cinematic imagery you know so Harmony made a sort of come that modern technique which James Joyce did and then uh, William Burroughs and then Bowie, you know, them cut-up things. Yeah. So it's all like, you know, we we get an input from everywhere, you know. It's like, you're not just... When you look at somewhere like that now, I'm getting hit by the lines, I'm looking at people over there, this, that, you know, That's what we're doing. And that was the importance of the change, George Pokemon. But going back to the song about you change everything now, it's kind of like... I was reading a criticism of that, and it said, like... Um, we automatically, when we go to bed, we wake up in the morning and think all the pieces get back. We, we are who we are, you know? Yeah. And I thought, what well, amazing notion, because we just go to bed and fall asleep and think we'll wake up as we were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what happens if you woke up and all them things were there, you know? Yeah. That, that's a magical wonder to me. It's like, wow, I'll go to bed tonight and I'm automatically think I'll wake up as Steve Diggle and all the rest of it. Yeah. But, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What amazes yeah, me, really, something is... interesting about that. And yeah. that part of you change everything. You change everything now as well. It's like that wonderment of that too. Yeah. So yeah. like we automatically wake up thinking we're going to be the same as we were yesterday. Isn't it? Yeah, but what amazes me is people are not afraid to fall asleep, but they're afraid to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, there's some people that never woke up either. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yeah. And but going to sleep. Day. Yeah, but going yeah. to sleep is like a, a metaphorical, metaphorically yeah. the same, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost like training yourself to die in a way. Yeah. <laughs> but it is true. Yeah, you know, don't be thinking, oh, I'll be me when I wake up and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we'll just say. Who's to say what's going to be different when you're dead? It's like, you don't know. Nobody knows. You just don't wake up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but that song, You Change Everything Now, some of the ingredients of what we're talking about is in that song, but kind of after, you know, it's probably about two and a half minutes, which a lot of these songs are in this one. And Oh, he's cut off again. Cut off again. Um, and again. Those things there, but you've got to wrap it up to this simple story, you know. Yeah. But that's yep. some of the wonderment underneath that song you sang. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you've suddenly changed. You've got a pair of fucking jeans on now and you're fucking <laughs> short. <aren't> you? <laughs> TikTok. Go back to TikTok yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was experimenting with the because on the last album, which is about seven years ago, anyway, some of the songs started getting longer, which is a good thing sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I thought, like, let's make it to the point. And some of them were like two and a half minutes. I had to chop verses off. I work with a clock on the wall, and as I'm playing these songs, I'm like, hold on a minute. Got these lovely other great bits, but then it's going on a bit, getting a bit too verbose so or complicated. So I tried to make it simple and direct, like, the beginning of how we started, yeah. you know, with our run of singles. Yeah. So this, uh, but right. get, getting that complexity in the songs, that's what I try to do as well, you know, with a few minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not an easy task, mate. Not really, no. Yeah, but um, it kind of wasn't, it wasn't, you know. Yeah. But if it, you know. It's kind of like speed, but speed date, you know, on a record. <laughs> <laughs> so you got two minutes to impress this chick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking, just going to tell them the world's end, you're eating the wrong food. Those fucking obesogens. I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> uh, all right, and mates. Well, 
No, you've broken on me again. Oh. <laughs> Excellent, how do you hear what you're saying? Back along. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 you're back on now. Hello. The last track, a lot of people like that being their size now, so a lot of people asking, um, um, who was Julia? Because you know, got a note, got a note from Julia, corridors of power, you know. Yeah. Thought control reality in a crystal golden shower. Then I turned around and looked into your Venus eyes. Now, Julia, I never normally mention girls or anybody's names in songs, but um, if you remember in 1984, Winston Smith's in a few, and then coming the other way is Julia and she hands him a note. And you're not supposed to have relationships in that book in 984, not to show love and that. So, all right, yeah. Simply about that. Oh. Just to clear it up for people. Now, a lot of people like the song, but not, they're not sure who Julia was. We've set 984, she hands him a note, and I go, got a note from Julia Corridors of Power. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. got to remember Boris Johnson was in there. And then, you know, thought control reality in a crystal golden shower. There was a lot of sex scandals as usual. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that, yeah. Yeah. And also it does say, though the world is changing, reality is changing too, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the things they're saying, they're making you say too, you know. Yeah. So it's that, man. So yeah. that's, well, uh, that's the complexity that apart yeah. from that, it's a nice tune. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know I, I, mean? I thought it was Gordon's girlfriend, to be honest. Who? Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> you anybody's girlfriend. <laughs> if you got a girlfriend called Julia, unlucky. <laughs> well, Jill did job on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but those are the things, because people have been asking me, what's this song about? And what's that? Yeah, yeah. But also, there was a lovely moment I met in the pub here with Dan, she said, I don't want to know what the song's about. I just love that. And I thought, let's keep it that, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. people have them have their memories of songs as well. Then they, they have their own notions. They say, you take what you want from the song, and that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. You interpret yeah. how you how you how you interpret it, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Because if you explain it, you know why it's already when you kind of like it's small. Yeah. What you get from it, you know. Yeah. But that's only your interpretation, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I'm telling a little story and I'm putting the ideas for, but I haven't got the answer. Yeah. And I've tried to, you know, avoid that linear stuff and have that complexity or, you know, just messing about with words, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I love Donald cool. Thomas, you know. Yeah. That's you know, cool, Undermilk under under Woods. It's yeah. all about the shit chat and that, you know. Oh, Mrs. Don't, you know, all that stuff. So I love all that. Yeah. When I was when I was a kid, buying Rolling Stones records and all the rest of them, Bob Bell, all that stuff. Um, I think I was 16 and I bought um, A Child's Christmas by Dylan Thomas. Okay. The, the album. I thought it's album? weird, you know. Yeah. Buying a poet album, not just like, you know, Bowie or the Stones or somebody. Mm. And on the back it said, he went to a local pub, he drank a lot, and then walked around the corner to the BBC studios and recited his album word for word. And I thought, Dylan Thomas is rock and roll, man. <laughs> yeah. And I've been to those pubs since, and I'm thinking, fuck, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'll do it too, because when I been to him, I thought, I could walk around the corner to the BBC now. <laughs> <laughs> But that was a beautiful image, and you know, also introduced to the love of words. You know, Dylan was great at that. And um, when you read that on the back, you know, he, you know, drunk himself, drunk himself to death. We walked around the corner, we shot this album word for word straight up. Amazing, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. took there with any rock and roll album. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I, I like a bit of that as well. You know, well, that influenced you as a kid, you know. Yeah. 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 But now look at me. <laughs> yeah, well now you're in now you're in the pub. Life, no. I, I don't think you'll be walking home, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be really signing a poetry album tonight. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, then. Well, thanks for telling us about your album. Right. Do you like it? It's all right, isn't it? It's yeah, good. it's yeah. not bad, yeah. yeah. it's good. I like it, yeah. I say I've changed my voice on it as well a bit, you know. Yeah. A little bit. Changed my voice a bit. It's messing with the voices, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I, 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 I've, I've got to be honest, I like the single track stuff better than the multi track stuff. Yeah, yeah. On your singing, I mean. I've I mean. Double, double track my voice on a few things. Yeah. Only because I, I did it straight, and we didn't use, uh, you know, didn't do the, the ADT thing. I double tracked this stuff. Yeah. But also, I was messing about with the voice sounds and stuff. Okay. Because I thought, um, I both don't tell you have the P tracks and my tracks. So we eat the high pitch one, and that, yeah. then I choir by kind of, and then. On the later albums, you know, I became the rocker one, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah got my little Richard box so. off. Yeah. Or, or, or the John Lennon on Twist and Shout, or the um, Paul McCartney, I looked on them, on Lenny P, which was, oh, you know, now, that's a long way from yesterday. So I was messing with, and I thought, I'll try and vary, vary the voices on this album, because there's no P now, so I'll do some, some other ones. <laughs> Other voices, but also it, it kind of fits the character away. Fits the character. I had to sing the Manchester in a Manchester voice. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, we're gonna lose you in a minute. All right. Yes, I did. Um, that's. I was messing around that. I was kind of messing around with the voices for that, which was kind of important and interesting. I think you know, in terms of that. So I say, probably, probably did that. You know. We yeah, got a station yeah. station, he's not singing that style man voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Bob Dylan's not singing ain't Mr. The Tambourine Man these days in that, but you know. Yeah. It's yeah. that kind of thing. It's trying to find some <clears throat> maturity and some other things, you know. So a lot of mix, a lot of things. Yeah. Which I find fascinating to do it. And you you know, you live and die by that live and die by the sword on these things, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So the next one is I have somebody else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn, into Mike, turn into Mike <laughs> Yarwood. Mike <laughs> Yarwood. That's a blast from the past. <laughs> but um, no, the important of the inflections and the things that I was trying to do on this album. So there's that as well, yeah. Sometimes it's heavily double tracked yeah. or the two voices on them and then others to be single. But then the single voices, like on Venus Eyes and... Uh, uh, don't mess with my brain. Don't mess with my brain and just like uh, get let it go. I thought back to kind of the old Steve voice, really, you know. Yeah. So, and they do work as well, you know, they... So... Yeah, I like it, I like it. You know, it's weird. But I just tried to make it very, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the way we Anyway, yeah. That's cool, yeah. man. That's good, right. All right, mate. We all good? Yeah, yeah thanks for talking yeah, to us. Great. Get some sonics in your soul. And this is a weird one today. I was hoping to get one, but stuck in the pump. So. Uh, no problem. No problem. It's been good fun. Hey, it's, it's all rock and roll, mate. It's all rock and roll. Absolutely. And funny enough, you say about Liam Gallagher, he lives it, my garden is onto the back of his garden. <laughs> so when we go in the pub, it's like, Mansion in the area, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're both from Manchester, and we all live around here. And also, yeah. Ray, Ray Davis drinks in the pub as well. Oh, does he? You get, oh, you get them to you. 30, yeah. 30 years ago, when I walked down the street, I heard Ray the around me. 30 odd years ago, when I moved in, I thought, fuck, that's Ray Davis, yeah. And, and tired of waiting came in my head and other things. Yeah. Like, you know, still got the original pie seat. But I've run him so many times and I drink to him. Uh, to me, that's a great honor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah amazing. We were going to write a song together, but we're not going to see it. Yeah, oh, you should do it, man. Just yeah. Do it. yeah, yeah. You know? He's not been well for a while, but... Uh, well, yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. 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 But yeah, hopefully that... Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be good, yeah. Oh, oh, please, so far. Yeah. All right, okay. Then, 
Yeah, cool. All, the, all the best, man. Hi, yeah, I hope we speak to you again. Sure. Been a pleasure. Been a Thanks, pleasure. mate. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Standing in the man just away. 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 Standing in the man just away.